If Liberal Senator Cory Bernardi has his way, he'll become Australia's answer to Donald Trump mobilising what he believes is a silent majority out there, disillusioned with mainstream politics. We already know those voters do exist. We saw them head to Pauline Hanson and Nick Xenophon at the last election. But there are two questions here. Is that protest vote more than just a solid fringe across the nation? Or has Senator Bernardi miscalculated and hammered the first nail in the coffin of his own political career? Either way, the Senator's move today to quit the Liberal Party is another controversy the Prime Minister doesn't need. In a moment, one of the government's most senior figures, the Treasurer Scott Morrison, will join me for his only interview today. But first, this analysis from political correspondent Andrew Proben. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent. Better for all Liberals to remain inside the tent. The one whose walk is blameless. He should resign from the Senate and run as an independent. Who speaks the truth from the heart. This has been a very difficult decision for me. His tongue utters no slander. Their trust has been violated. And casts no slur on others. I'm not going to say that about Corey. Who despises a vile person, but honours those who fear the Lord. What's your advice to Senator Bernardi? Pray. Pray hard. Who keeps an oath, even when it hurts. They're the ones he made the promise to, to be a Liberal. Whoever does these things, will never be shaken. Parliament's finally returned, and as tradition dictates, politicians are reminded of human frailty. Cory Bernardi's defection provided a lesson not needed from the pulpit, but when it came, it had everyone listening. I rise to inform the Senate that this morning I resigned as a member of the Liberal Party. I stand here today both reluctant and relieved Reluctant because this decision has weighed heavy on my heart, but relieved because whilst it is difficult, I believe it is the right thing to do. Senator Bernardi was light on explanation, except to say the system itself is broken. The level of public disenchantment with the major parties, the lack of confidence in our political process, and the concern about the direction of our nation is very, very strong. This is a direct product of us, the political class, being out of touch with the hopes and aspirations of the Australian people. The response? Hostile. In Senator Bernardi, we have six and a half foot of ego, but not an inch of integrity. And he is clearly no longer prepared to stomach the rank hypocrisy of a leader who clings to office by parroting views on in which he does not believe. If one seeks to restore confidence in the political class. It is a poor way to begin by breaking the promise one makes to one's electors. This is something of a dog act. Cory Bernardi has outraged his colleagues. He took the Liberal Party carpet ride to last year's election, secured another six years in the Senate, only to switch colours. This is betrayal at its most basic, hitching a lift and they're not paying for the fare. The South Australian would not have won his seat as an independent, and the anger reserved for the rat in the ranks is red hot, especially among Conservative Liberals. Was Cory Bernardi gutless for not showing up to the party room to explain himself today? Look, it's a very good question. We're all a bit disappointed. If Cory wanted to leave the party, I thought he had an obligation to come to that party room, look us in the eye, and tell us the reasons why. And he gave somewhat of an explanation, but not much today to the Senate. Was that sufficient? Well, it wasn't. I, I was expecting uh, Senator Bernardi to set out the reasons why uh, he thought he'd be better in his own party rather than inside the Liberal tent within the Senate. And look, he gave a, a handful of sort of like only small reasons. But whatever they are, surely Corey understands that he'd be best to be fighting inside the Liberal tent. Senator Bernardi phoned the PM early this morning to confirm his defection, ahead of a party room meeting. 7.30 understands Malcolm Turnbull inquired as to why the Maverick wasn't quitting Parliament altogether, but got no answer. In turn, the Senator warned of moves against the Prime Minister in the face of poor polling. Are there such moves? Look, there's no moves. Look, we've only been... This Parliament has only run a little over six months. The Prime Minister's got to be given a full opportunity 
to do everything he possibly can. Now, we've got a difficult Senate that we need to negotiate with. Every single piece of legislation has to be sort of gone through with all the independent senators line by line. We're only in Parliament six months. You know, we've still got a good two and a half years until the election. Malcolm Turnbull is a leader under pressure. The political landscape has changed around him and he's seeking to adapt to the voter antipathy with a more punter-friendly pitch. <laughs> Tackling rising power prices is his first offering to families. This is a pinch point for Labor over its slavish pursuit of renewable energy. Everything we do as a government is focused on getting help and support for hard-working Australian families. We are standing up for them. The PM wants to rebrand himself the people's champion. He hopes it'll shield him from criticism that he's an out-of-touch silver tail. And today he offered a sacrifice on the altar of public disdain for the political class. The gold pass that gives ex-pollies and their spouses free lifetime travel has been axed. It's a ghastly relic from yesteryear whose death is long overdue. So, well done, PM. But is it enough? You're from the Conservative wing of the Liberal Party. Is Malcolm Turnbull Conservative enough for you? Malcolm on some issues, we disagree on certain issues, and there's nothing wrong with that. But look, Malcolm's now speaking about the importance of electricity prices. He's on track on that. He's been keeping the position that we have on the plebiscite uh, for changes to the Marriage Act. Look, so I think Malcolm is doing a good job in very difficult, very, very difficult circumstances.